What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. On today's edition of Gear God's Quality Control, we're gonna be checking out the brand new Black Hole Reverb pedal from Eventide. <laughs> If you saw my video on the H9 multi-effects pedal from Eventide, you'll know that there was a black hole algorithm inside the H9, and all they've done here is to give it its own dedicated pedal. The black hole is capable of a wide variety of sounds, but it really excels at the sort of big, ambient, washy kinds of reverb. So that's kind of what we're gonna focus on here today. We're gonna start by just going through some of the presets and hearing what they sound like. Luckily, Eventide has this USB device manager, editor, software, and we're gonna be using that as well as the controls on the front panel to change the sounds up. The guitar tone that you're gonna be hearing today is my Fender Player Series Strat. We're going into the Rev D20. I'm gonna be using the G2 pedal to sort of grid it up at a couple different points and then uh, you're gonna be hearing the black hole in stereo. Here's what the guitar tone sounds like, just dry, no effects. And then uh, with a little bit of grit from the G2 pedal. And some dad licks. Now I'm just gonna cycle through some of the presets that came with the pedal. The one that you already heard in the intro is just the, the first, the black hole preset. Um, sounds thusly. Um, that's with the mix all the way up. We can put it to a sore, sort of more neutral setting. Could fly away on that one. Dark matter. It's just so nice. It's just beautiful right out of the right out of the gate. And it just keeps going. All right, then we got Nebula. Kind of like a nice fade in, so you're not really hearing the the attack. That is beautiful. This one's called Singularity. Kind of comes back at you. I do know other chords, I promise. Neutrino. Interesting. All right, this next one is called Cigaroos. Pretty sure they're trying to make a cigaros joke, so. Iceland. Yeah, that could be a whole cigaros song for sure. This one's called Hey Honey. Why is it called that? doesn't come back for a while. Fish hole. Ooh, nice and shimmery. This one's called train tracks. <laughs> That's cool though. This one's called Dog Star. It's warping my brain. Right, this one is called Vortexting.
This one straight up sounds like I'm having a conversation with an alien. Centaurus. This one's called Stellar. Ooh. This one's called Afterglow. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I like that one a lot. This is called Blue Shift. Comparatively very mild. Red Shift. Wobbly. This one is called Andromeda. I was worried I was gonna have to like play for this demo, but literally any of these one chord gives you pretty much the, the whole idea. This next one is called Halo. Parsec. And then last one, Triangulum. So of course, most of those presets that you just heard are pretty outrageously huge. And if you want something a little bit more practical, looks like we're gonna have to dial it in ourselves. So I'm gonna use just the controls on the face of the pedal. The two main controls that we're gonna use to do that are the mix and the size. Of course, mix is just how much of the signal we're using. And that's gonna depend a lot on whether or not you're using it in the loop or in front of the amp series or parallel or anything like that. So like right about here, we start to get kind of a, a nice gentle little halo. Turn up the size. You know, you could use this sound at a bar mitzvah and they're not gonna throw you off the stage unlike some of these other ones. Let's crank them both up a little bit more. Really nice. Family appropriate amount of reverb. Let's give it just a little bit more. Give it a little more juice. Nice. So I think anything much past this, and we're starting to get a little bit obnoxious, but Still really usable, beautiful tone. So let's go and we're, we're gonna leave the, uh, the mix and size knob, a just pull it down a tiny bit. So we can still really hear it, but it's not ridiculous. And then we're gonna see what all these other knobs do. So I think the gravity knob is probably the most unique one of the bunch. And basically what it does is it plays the reverb forward or backwards, which is wild. So. Here it is, all the way to the right. Okay. Here it is, in the middle. Here it is, all the way to the left. You can hear it kind of ring. So that's just kind of weird, uh, but gives it a, a different dimension. The whole thing with reverb is that it kind of puts you 
in a, in, a, in a place. You can hear the size of the room that you're in. It like tricks your brain. So what, is, what does that do to your brain if it's backwards? I don't, I don't know. So then of course we got the feedback knob, which is gonna control how much we get back. And we can go really, really crazy with this. Oh, not quite that crazy. I think we're pointed almost at infinite feedback here. You're definitely gonna wanna play a note that you wanna hear a lot if you're gonna have it here. Because it just keeps going. All right, now I'll demonstrate the high and low knobs. This EQs just the reverb. So I've got the mix all the way up. So what you're hearing is mostly the reverb and not a lot of the dry signal. Okay, here it is with a high all the way up. Then the low, here's the low all the way up. Really thickens it up. Try the low all the way down and the high all the way up. It's a bit harsh. Let's try the opposite. Okay, and then everybody back to normal. Cool. In order to conserve space, they've doubled up on the functionality of the knobs by just adding one button. So you can access the second layer of editing by just pushing this button. And then we've got all these secondary things that the knobs do. So for example, this is the out level. We've got the rate and the depth for the modulation effect, which is like basically a chorus that you can add. And then we've got the cue control for the high and low knobs. And then a pre-delay um, it says delay, but it's basically when the reverb actually starts happening. So you can basically decide when you want to hear the reverb repeat. Okay, if you have it all the way down, it's immediate. Or you could hear it practically tomorrow. Let's play around with the size knob because that's gonna be one of the biggest determining factors in the kind of sound that you're gonna get out of the reverb. Let's start with it all the way down. Almost like a slap back kind of a sound. Take it a little bit bigger. Starting to get kind of lost in it. Lost in space. Well, that'll just go and go. I think what's happening here is that we're expanding to an acoustic space that can't really exist.
Like that's so big that the structure size that that would be, I don't think it would fit on a continent. So presumably it just plain doesn't exist. One of my very favorite features of the black hole is the ability to not just control one parameter with the expression pedal, but to group a bunch of different parameters together per preset so that you can change all of those parameters in real time with your expression controller. It's also really easy to assign the parameters. All you gotta do is click these little blue buttons underneath, and then this will set how far the expression pedal is gonna actually go, how much it's gonna change. And you can do that per parameter, which means some of them maybe will go really wildly bigger or smaller, and then uh, maybe one of them is just really subtle. One really practical application of this idea is to assign, for example, the mix knob and the output level to your expression controller. And what that's gonna do is give you more reverb and a volume boost, for example, if you wanna do a solo or play a melody part, and that'll work like this, right? Time to take your solo. That's just one really basic application of this idea. You can group together as many of these parameters as you want. You can group them all together and change everything about the sound at the same time in real time on stage if you want. This is gonna give you a crazy amount of control over the sound of this pedal. At this point, you've probably had enough of the clean tones. Let's try some high gain sounds through it. I've now swapped out the Rev D20 for the G20, which is the high gain version, and I'm using my Kiesel Leia guitar. That's how it sounds with nothing on it at all. So now we're gonna turn on the black hole. I've got just some very general settings going here, okay? Not a whole hell of a lot. Now let's try it with a ton of big reverb. This just makes anything you play sound incredibly epic and really intentional.
One super cool feature that I almost forgot to show you is the freeze button. Check this out. So you can play something, hit the freeze button, and it'll just hold it for you indefinitely until you hit the button again, thusly. And then you can play over it. That's pretty damn cool if you ask me. So as you heard, so many amazing, beautiful sounds in this unit. I had a great time playing with it. I feel like this is one of those pedals that could just be for your own entertainment. Like you could just sit there and play like one chord and just let it sort of wash over you in stereo. You don't even have to use it like in a song, on stage with a band. You could just have a great time with it like I did, just blissing out by yourself and I don't think you'd even be sad about spending money on just that. But of course, also plenty of really usable sounds in here, sort of more typical ones, I'll say, for, I don't know, a band that has a drummer and more than one chord. Um, you can uh, just dial it back a lot and get even something like a sort of slap back reverb. You can store lots of presets. You can actually use MIDI to control this. If you have a converter, you can use it in the expression pedal jack. And then you can control all the parameters with pretty much any typical MIDI device. I absolutely love the ability to control any of the parameters with the expression pedal because that opens up a, a whole world of expressiveness and real-time playing. Um, you can go from very gentle to incredibly wild. You could take one note and make it your entire solo just by gradually increasing the mix, the size, and the feedback. You could drown in it forever and happily die in the black hole from Eventide. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell to join the notification squad. <laughs> Drop me a like and leave a comment in the comment section letting me know if you would use this kind of outrageous, huge, huge reverb in any song that you do. I want to know, and I'll see you real soon. I wonder what would happen if I turned all of the knobs all the way up.